red blood cells are normally associated um, with transporting oxygen uh, to tissues in the body from the lungs. Uh, red blood cells also play a very small role, but a significant role, in the immune system. Um, so red blood cells are also known as erythrocytes, and I'm going to tell you now how they um, actually play a role with complement. So red blood cells, you know where they're found, they're found in the bloodstream. So whatever role they're going to play is in the bloodstream. So I've drawn a bloodstream here, and I've drawn some, what have I drawn there? Those are antigens. Those are some pieces of a virus or a bacteria, or the pathogen virus or bacteria has released molecules into the bloodstream. So these are uh, non-self molecules. Uh, so whatever these are, they're bad. We want to get rid of them. Either they're pieces of viruses or bacteria, they're proteins from them, they're something from a pathogen. And they're in our bloodstream. Uh, we don't want them there, so we want to get rid of them. So we need to be able to recognize them and have some effect or mechanism to remove them from the bloodstream. So when a pathogen is in your bloodstream or parts of a pathogen are in your bloodstream, um, how do we recognize them and remove them from the body? So usually it involves antibodies. The best way to recognize um, some non-self molecule is to make antibodies against it. And we'll get into uh, how antibodies can recognize a pathogen in the humoral immunity uh, unit. But for now, uh, let's say uh, you've had an, an infection and there's pathogen in your bloodstream or uh, soluble antigens made by the pathogen in your bloodstream. And after a week or so, you finally make antibodies against this. And we're talking about IgG type antibodies. So right now I've drawn three IgG monomers and their antibody binding sites are binding some antigens. I'm sorry, their antigen binding sites are binding antigens in your bloodstream. So that's great. You've got um, foreign molecules in your bloodstream and you've covered them with antibody. Well, how's that going to help get rid of it? We still need that. We've recognized it, but we haven't removed it. So this goes back to the classical pathway of complement activation. The C1 molecule, that large complex made of C1Q and C1R and C1S, that's also in your bloodstream. And C1, we learned, binds IgG. So if IgG is stuck to the surface of a pathogen or stuck to any pieces of that pathogen, anything that that pathogen made, any antigens that pathogen released into your bloodstream, well, C1 molecule, the C1Q part of it, will bind the IgG. Okay, well, that's, what's that going to facilitate? Well, if that happens, then that will eventually lead to the formation of C3 convertase, the classical C3 convertase, which means we will decorate this pathogen or pieces of the pathogen with C3Bs. Well, that's great. We've covered things with C3Bs. Um, How is that going to help us get rid of the pathogen? Well, uh, if these aren't pathogens, but let's say pieces of a pathogen, membrane attack complexes aren't going to help because these things, let's say, are not enveloped in membranes. Um, we could have some phagocytes uh, opsonize this, but uh, the phagocytes we find in the bloodstream, neutrophils, um, they're typically not doing a lot of um, phagocytosing of pathogens in the bloodstream. So what's going to be neutrophils enter the tissues typically to, in order to activate. So uh, how are we going to get rid of this pathogen? So this brings us to erythrocytes, red blood cells. Red blood cells have a complement receptor on them, CR1. So you know, I'm sure you've learned about red blood cells, erythrocytes, they're sacs of hemoglobin that transport oxygen from the lungs to the tissues. And red blood cells have this immune receptor on it, CR1. That's really interesting. Why would it have CR1 on it? Are red blood cells phagocytes? Are they going to phagocytose this? Absolutely not. Right? Red blood cells are not phagocytes, but they will bind the C3B that is attached to the surface of the pathogen, and they're going to transport this to macrophages in the liver and in the spleen. So when we introduced macrophages, and we talked about them in a previous video, macrophages are resident, and they're present in your connective tissues all over your body. They're also present in the spleen, which acts like a lymph node, a filter for your bloodstream,
and you'll find macrophages in the liver as well. So you're sending a lot of blood to the spleen and a lot of blood to the liver, and part of the functions of those organs is to uh, remove bad things from your blood. And here's a bad thing, so we're going to remove it. So what red blood cells do when they're traveling around the body, if they happen to bump into something covered in C3Bs, they will bind it, and they will, as they trans roam around the body, if they happen to go by the spleen or liver, they're going to run into macrophages there. So macrophages in the liver and the spleen, which have the CR1 complement receptor on it, uh, the red blood cell will actually hand off this complex to the macrophages in those organs and tissues. So what red blood cells are doing is they're transporting um, pathogens or antigens, which are pieces of pathogens, covered in complement. Um, and specifically, typically that complement is put there via the classical pathway using IgG antibodies. Um, it could also be IgM antibodies as well, but in this video I drew IgG antibodies. So red blood cells, they do play a role in the immune system. They transport uh, C3B covered um, antigens from the bloodstream and hand them off to macrophages in the liver and in the spleen in order for the macrophage to phagocytose this complex and destroy it.